Hey, determining truth in our culture today can be a little bit difficult. As a matter of fact, there are some that say that there is no absolute truth uh, at all in our world. But that's one of the reasons here at the World Equestrian Center, we like to give you the Word of God. We believe the Bible is a good standard for measuring the Word of Truth. And so today, I hope that what you hear will help you find truth for your life from God's Word. I want to talk about partnerships uh, today with you just a little bit. And, you know, uh, I think most of us are familiar with partnerships. We have all kinds of partnerships. You know, sometimes we have business partnerships. We have relational partnerships. We have uh, uh, relation, or we have uh, a partnership with uh, God. And this morning, I just want to, want to talk about that for just a little bit. But, you know, there's a lot of partnerships that uh, business-wise that we've heard a lot about over the years. And uh, I may compete with them just a little bit over there with the speaker. Um, I don't want to, I don't, I want to give you all an opportunity to hear. So most of you know Wilbur and Orville Wright. They're uh, pretty famous around here, you know, especially in the Dayton area. We have the uh, Air Force Museum up there and you see all of the stuff that, uh, they've been a part of, but, but those two guys had a partnership. Even though they were brothers, they had a partnership. And, uh, you know, they started out fixing bicycles together. And then they developed in 1903 this three-axis control that actually allowed them to fly. And, you know, uh, it's, it's been history ever since. You know, we travel all the time by plane, and it's because of that partnership that Wilbur and Orville had together that we can do what we do. Uh, maybe you know Ben uh, Cohen and Jerry Greenfield. Uh, did their names ring a bell with you? Uh, they were born four days apart. They met during a high school gym class in 1963, and they quickly became uh, inseparable. And they uh, took a correspondence course. Think about this, a correspondence course in ice cream making. Now you eat their ice cream all the time, Ben and Jerry's. Um, Everyone knows Steve Jobs and Steve Wonuk. Uh, they founded Apple. Good friends. Founded Apple in 1976. What would we do without our iPhones? You know, those guys uh, ha probably had no idea what was on the horizon. Then you got Bill Gates and Paul Allen. They founded uh, Microsoft in 1975. And they were childhood friends. And they shared a love of computers. And they were uh, hackers uh, uh, part-time in high school together. You know, so, so that partnership um, uh, blossomed and became something really special. Uh, you may not know this, but Wilbur Proctor and James Gamble, do those names ring bells with you? Uh, they founded their company in 1837. And those guys married the Norris sisters. And so they were brother-in-laws. So in-laws, you know, don't always get along, but their father-in-law encouraged them. They had a soap and candle making business, each one of them. And their father-in-law encouraged them to develop a company. And now we buy our soap and all of those things from Procter & Gamble. Uh, it, it, those partnerships, you know, they, they reach so far back and, you know, it just kind of reminds you that uh, we do better together. You know, it's always easier when you have somebody with you and you're working together with those, with those folks. And I realized this morning, most of those are business partnerships. And, and, and I just want to kind of shift gears this morning and talk about our partnership uh, with God, uh, because I feel like that we have a partnership with him when we come into relationship with him. Uh, Matthew uh, chapter 11, Jesus spoke these words, Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you'll find rest for your souls. Now this next verse says, For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Most of us are familiar with yokes. I mean, we don't use them much anymore, but, you know, back in the day, they would tie two animals together, and that way they could do a lot more work together. They were uh, inseparable at that point. Uh, they, they pulled plows, they pulled wagons, they did all of those things. Actually, if you went to Honduras with me sometime, uh, I could probably uh, run across a yoke of oxen coming down the road with a, a wagon or a cart uh, tied behind them because they still have yokes of oxen there and they still do work that way. Uh, but, but it's this connection that this partnership that these two animals would have in that yoke. And Jesus was inviting us to be part of that yoke with him. Uh, you know, 
uh, that purpose of that yoke was to do things easier together, to accomplish more together. And Jesus is inviting us to be part of that with him, to be in partnership with him, to do more, to, to be more, to, to live out a better relationship uh, in life. You know, you wonder sometimes what does that relationship look like? What does that partnership with Jesus look like? Whenever people have a partnership uh, in, in business, there's usually a contract and there's usually, you know, everybody knows the expectations. Uh, sometimes I don't think that we always understand the expectations that come with being in partnership with Jesus. I, I, I want you to know that uh, it means something different with God than maybe any other partnership. You see, God is a jealous God. I'm going to give you some hard words this morning, okay? <laughs> Stick with me. It'll get better. <laughs> he's a jealous God. And I say that because he's not willing to take second place in this partnership with us. God expects to be number one. I just posted a thing yesterday about my wife's birthday. And, uh, you know, I'm thankful that I'm number two in her life. Because Jesus is number one. And God expects us to put him as number one. As a matter of fact, the Ten Commandments start off with saying, I am the Lord your God. You know, you have to love me with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your mind. God wants us to just be in partnership with him. No one else. And so he said you couldn't have any other gods. Uh, you can't worship anybody else. You're only allowed to worship me if you're going to be in this partnership with me. It's kind of a, you know, an amazing thing that God was saying here and kind of hard to hear for some folks because we, we just like to accept everything and make everybody okay and feel good. And, jo and God is saying, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm God. <laughs> you know, I want you to love me and only me. I want you to be in relationship with me and only me. Put me first. Paul kind of talks about this a little bit in 2 Corinthians chapter 6. He says this, don't team up with those who are unbelievers. How can righteousness be partner with wickedness? How can light live with darkness? What harmony can there be between Christ and the devil? How can a believer be a partner with an unbeliever? What union can there be between God's temple and idols? For we are the temple of the living God. And God said, I will live in them and walk among them. I will be their God and they will be my people. Therefore, come out from among unbelievers and separate yourselves from them, says the Lord. Do not touch their filthy things, and I will welcome you. I will be your father, and you will be my sons and daughters, says the Almighty. That's pretty strong stuff, don't you think? But that's the word. That's not me speaking this morning. That's what God has spoken through his word. You know, that we have to be in relationship, partnership, just with God. He has to have our whole heart, all of our intentions, all of our desires. That's tough. That's tough. But let me tell you, the partnership that God wants with us is so important in our lives. I, I want to make a disclaimer here, uh, just a second. We're not talking uh, this morning about staying away from everybody else in the world around us. Uh, if, you know, we can't really tell other people about the love of God if we're never talking to anybody else. So you can't just uh, become a monk and live in, the, in an isolated place, you know, and think that this is what God's talking about. God is just saying, I want your affections. I want your heart. I want you to be in, in relationship with me. Close relationships, though, uh, sometimes are difficult for us if they're not godly relationships. Paul makes a point here in this passage that I just read with you, read to you. Righteousness and lawlessness, lawlessness can't mix. In other words, you can't, you can't have uh, sin and righteousness uh, holding hands and walking through life together. It, it just doesn't work very well. Darkness and light. It's impossible for it to be dark if the light's turned on, right? And so those two can't work together. A believer and an unbeliever. Uh, again, that whole idea of us giving our hearts and our minds and our souls everything to somebody who doesn't share the same uh, goals and beliefs about God that we do. Sometimes that's a difficult thing. I've talked to many folks in relationships that have one believer and one unbeliever, and it's such a challenge for them. And they think they can work it out, but it, it's, always, it's always stressful. And then the temple of God and the temple of idols. Those two don't have any uh, way of mixing together. I remember one time uh, when they took uh, the Ark of the Covenant and put it in uh, a, a Baal's 
temple. And every morning they got up, they'd go out there and the, the idol Baal was tipped over and had fallen over. They couldn't figure it out, so they set it back up. Next morning, same thing. You know, they just don't mix. God and other gods don't mix together. We have, to, we have to keep God separate from that. So our partnership with Him just requires a total devotion, a total devotion to Him. In the Old Testament, God was really explicit about how the children of Israel would live out their lives just with God. He had chosen them as special people, and he wanted that relationship with them. He told them they couldn't intermarry with other nations. They couldn't make covenants or agreements with other nations. They were just supposed to stay faithful to the Lord. Uh, verse 17 that I just read to you says, Come out from among them, you know, to, to be faithful to the Lord in, in God's will for your life. You know, close, ungodly relationships tend to lead us away from what God has for us, God's best for us. You know, God's people uh, in the Old Testament were constantly disobeying God. They were constantly doing their own thing. Uh, how many times did they have to suffer judgment because of the things that they had done, the things that they had uh, tried to move away from God and choose a different God, and God had to bring them back some way? You know, the book of Hosea, if you ever get a chance to read the book of Hosea, uh, it's just a wonderful love story of how God was chasing his people always. Uh, the prophet Hosea, he told him, he said, I want you to go marry a prostitute. Well, that was really a crazy thing to do, but God was trying to make an example and an illustration in Hosea's life. And so he did. He married Gomer, this prostitute, and he was to have children with them. In Hosea chapter 1, it says this, When the Lord first began speaking to Israel through Hosea, he said to him, Go and marry a prostitute so that some of her children will be conceived in prostitution. This, illustration, this will illustrate how Israel has acted like a prostitute by turning against the Lord and worshiping other gods. So Hosea's life was this great illustration uh, for what God was seeing in his people. And so if you read on in the story, I'll give you the little snapshot. But Hosea, uh, run, uh, I'm sorry, Gomer runs off from Hosea. So he's left with his kids. And God, God tells Hosea to go find her. And he actually finds her on the marketplace as a slave being sold. And Hosea has to buy her back so that she could be his wife and come back home with him. And God was illustrating that, you know, I, there is this separation that has to happen. And when you don't serve and honor God, then, you know, you, you, you will not be tied to him. But he's always pursuing us and wanting us back. It's just such a good illustration of how Jesus redeemed us and paid for us and how God continues to chase us. You know, you might be, you might be tempted to say, well, that was the Old Testament with Hosea and uh, Gomer and God. And, you know, those people didn't know what they were doing anyway. They were always running off from God. But really, for us today, we have some of the same issues that we follow other gods, we follow other things, and we prostitute ourselves to many things in the world. As a matter of fact, James says this, you adulteresses, do you not know that friendship with the world is hostility toward God? Therefore, whoever wishes to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. We're not talking about working in the world, living in the world, but when our affections are for things other than God that are in the world, then, then God, is, God is saying, you need to come back to me. You need to serve and honor me. We need that relationship, that partnership that we started with. You know, Jesus calls us into a relationship when he's asking us to be in a partnership with him. Something that is good for us, you know, because religion is very deadly. But a relationship is life-giving. And Jesus is constantly calling us to be in relationship with him, to put him first in our life, to honor him, to lift him up and to worship him. You know, there's a lot of benefits when it comes right down to it, in being a partnership, in a partnership with Jesus. He wants to share our load in life. You know, just like uh, those two animals, when they pull together, one animal is carrying the load of the other, and the other is carrying the load of the one on the other side. And Jesus is in this partnership with us so that he can help us carry the load in life. You know, people struggle all the time. 
I talk to hundreds of people that deal with issues in life, all kinds of problems with their children, all kinds of problems in their own lives with relationships, all kinds of financial issues, all kind. You can't imagine all of the things that I hear. And you know, the bottom line is Jesus wants to help every one of those situations. He wants his, our relationship with him to help pull the load through life. That's the way life is. We live in a broken, fallen world. There's things that go wrong, things that we wouldn't choose to happen, but they happen. And we need help to get through them many times. Jesus isn't a crutch. He is, he is the one who really just carries us. He's the one who picks us up. I love the footprint song or a poem, you know, of how that there was uh, two foot sets of footprints. Jesus was walking with that person. But when things got rough, he carried them. And, you know, that's the partnership that we have with Jesus today that when we enter into this relationship, he promises he'll never leave us. He'll never forsake us. He'll never let us go on our own. He always wants to be in that relationship with us. You know, he told us to ask whatever we need and he would provide it for us. I don't know what you might be needing today. I know we prayed just a little while ago, but, but whatever you need today, you can turn to the partner in the yoke with you and tell him what's going on in your life. Jesus said this, I tell you the truth in John chapter 14, anyone who believes in me will do the same works that I have done and even greater works because I'm going to be with the father. You can ask for anything in my name and I will do it. So the son can bring glory to the father. Yes, ask for anything in my name and I will do it. That's really why we pray in Jesus name. A lot of people get a little excited about that when folks end their prayer in Jesus name. But let's be honest this morning. I want to pray in his name because I'm in partnership with him. I'm trusting him. I'm in relationship with him. I want him to hear and answer my prayers. And so I'm willing to pray in his name because I know that that's where the power is. You know, Jesus wants each of us to be in partnership with him. I don't know what other kind of partnerships you have. Everybody has some partnerships along the, the way of life. But the most important one that you can have today is with God himself. Jesus gives us that opportunity to be in partnership with him. It's a simple process. All we have to do is recognize that we need him to confess our wrongs and ask for forgiveness and to let him be the director of our life, the master of our life. That's how this partnership with Jesus works. So I encourage you today, you know, if you've never done that, or maybe you've never seen partnership with God this way, uh, pray and ask him to help you in that partnership that you can relate to him, walk with him, live with him, let him work through you. Let's pray. Father, thank you this morning for giving us the opportunity to join up with you. Lord, when we think about some of these business partnerships that we're aware of and all the things that these folks accomplished and they were just humans. Lord, we're encouraged today that if we're in partnership with you, just as Jesus said, greater things we will do. And I pray this morning, Lord, that our hearts will be drawn to you. And Lord, if uh, there's a person today who has not made that decision to be in partnership with you, to set everything else in life aside, and to focus their heart and their attention on you. Lord, help them today to do that. God, we love you. We honor you. We thank you so much for all that Jesus has done for us. And we want to walk today in that yoke and in that partnership with you. In Jesus' name, amen.